Hey there and welcome to another leak code problem. So today we're going to be doing problem number 895, max frequency stack. And it's definitely, I think it's kind of a cool problem. The code for it is pretty straightforward, but to figure out what data structures you need can definitely be tricky. So let's take a read. Design a stack like data structure to push elements to the stack and pop the most frequent element from the stack. Implement this class, uh, construct it, push, push it, pushes an integer on top of the stack and pop removes and returns the most frequent element in the stack. If there's a tie, the element closest to the stack's top is removed and returned. And so here's an example we're given. So we try to push five, the stack is five, we push seven, it's five, seven, push five, push seven, push four, push five. Now we try to pop. So the count is five here is three. So that's gonna be our most frequent element. So we pop a five. And then the stack becomes five, seven, five, seven, four. And then we pop again, so we return 7 because 7 is the most frequent. So we're not popping the last element, we're popping the most frequent element. If there's a tie, then we return the one closest to the top. So there's two 5s and two 7s, so we return 7. Then it becomes 5, 7, 5, 4. We pop again, 5 is the most frequent now. And then we pop again, they're all 1, but 4 is the most frequent. And so when we are trying to f figure out a data structure for this, what data structures come to mind? Well, we're trying to get the most frequent element. So maybe something like, if we only care about the most frequent element, maybe something like a heap, right, would come to mind. But the problem is, for a heap, let's say we have some value, right, in a count, or something like this, right? We would actually probably have the count of the value first. The problem is, when we get rid of one of these, like, okay, sure, we can get the, we can get something with the smallest count or the biggest count, but what if there's a tie? Then how do you know which one was in the heap first? You really don't. And also, how do you update these values? That's also kind of tricky, right? Like, like what, what would we do? It would be kind of tricky. So the heap is not the best data structure. And so let's think of what other things we need. Well, we need to keep track of the frequency of every single number. And so something that keeps track of a frequency usually, right, is a dictionary with or some kind of counter. So we're gonna wanna use a dictionary that has a count, right? So a dictionary counter that keeps track of how many of each number we have. And then the other thing we need, and I actually misread this problem and it made it way harder for me. I thought that when we pop something, we pop all elements of that number. So if we have like 575, five, we would pop all fives, which would make the problem significantly harder because then you would need to get rid of them everywhere. But because we're only popping one, think about what happens. So let's actually go through this example and let's think about what happens and then it's gonna be pretty clear with what we need to do. Okay. So let's say we do this, right? And then so we put we push on a five. And then let's say we have this counter, right? So we have a five and the counter is I'm just gonna have that down here. So C five is one. Now we push on a seven. So seven, okay, we make it one, push on a five. Now the counter becomes two. And instead of actually, so this technically will get replaced, but instead of replacing them, I'm gonna write the count side by side to make it all more obvious what we're gonna to need to be doing. So in seven, count becomes two. And then we push on a four, of one. Okay, and then we push on a five, count becomes three. So as you can see from this example, we actually have, let's say we have a count of two. When we get rid of a five, then it becomes one and so on. And so we have these counts and a lot of these counts are the same, right? So we have a five with a count of one, we have a seven with a count of one. And now let's say we get rid of, so actually this this seven, I believe needs to be a five, right? Because this third five, let's say, let's say we have these counts somewhere. In, in some other in some other data structure and we just take the biggest count of five. So the big the variable of the biggest count would be a five. Could we pop that? Now we have the biggest count is two and the variable there is gonna be the last one pushed on. So we, if we need to keep track of the last number pushed on, we're probably gonna to want to use something like a list, right? Because a list maintains its order. If we use a heap it's gonna get resorted or a set it's gonna get resorted. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to have this dictionary of counts and we're going to have another dictionary and it's going to contain the number of letters. So let's just call this number of letters, right? 
and this would basically be the count of a letter. And so what we would do, let's see how this would look. So this dictionary is actually going to be a dictionary of lists for every single count, and we're just going to be adding numbers onto the list, and then we can see what count are we at, and then depending on what count we're at, we can delete the biggest element. So let's actually take a look at what that's going to look like uh, with these numbers again, right? So let's say we have this dictionary, let's just call it D, and we're going to have some counts, and we're going to, and the way we're going to get these counts is we're going to, I'll show you how to do this. So let me actually get rid of the all of this, and let's, uh, let's go through this example again with both of these dictionaries. So we have C, and then we have D, right? So we push on a 5. Then we make the count one. Then we say, okay, let's go to everything with count one, whatever that is, and let's add a five to that. So we can add a five, okay? And I'm just gonna make this long because we're gonna need to be adding more things. Then we have a seven. So we put on a seven into the counts. We say, okay, I count a seven. Now let's go to everything with counts one. Let's add a seven. Then we add a five. So now we update this to two. So let's say everything with counts two. Well, we don't have anything of counts two yet, so we're gonna add a five here. And th that's why this problem is a lot easier instead of removing every single occurrence of a number, because then you'd have to remove a five here, five. It would it would be much less efficient. But because we're only removing the last one, this is what we could do. Okay, so now we added a five. Now we add a seven again. So we change this to two. Then we add a seven here. Now we add a four. Make the count one, the count is one, so we add a four here. And then finally, we add a five, right? So this goes to three. Now we don't have a three yet, so three, we add a five. And then we're also going to keep track of, so we're going to have another variable called max index, right? So we just max index. And that's pretty straightforward. We're just going to say, is the count of the new variable we added greater than our current max index? If it is, then we're going to use that. So let's see how this would look like for this algorithm, right? For this popping. So our max index here, I'm just going to call that m. So let's just say m equals, it's going to be three, right? After we added this last five. Okay. So we go to a pop. Okay. We, so we say we have to go to this max index three. We have to pop a value. So whatever we pop, so we're going to pop this five. Then we're going to say, go to whatever we popped, decrement its count, because we just popped it. So this becomes a two. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to say, okay, are we, once we pop this, do we have anything left to pop? Because if we have some other values in here, then the next value we're going to be popping is from the same max index. But if this list is empty, then our new max index is the number before. So if this is empty, then we're going to decrement by one. So now it's going to be two. Okay. So now we need to pop again. So our max index is two. We go to this list two. What do we pop? We pop a seven. Okay. That's going to be our return value. So this is gone. Then we decrement seven. Then we pop this seven. And we we check, is this list empty? No, it's not. So we're going to keep the same max index. So we're going to get rid of the seven. Then we pop again, right? So what's our max index? It's two. We're popping five. So we get, we're, that's going to be a return variable. And then our five is going to go to a one. All right, our count is going to be a one. Now this list is empty. So we, our max index is going to be up here. So max index is one. Then we need to pop four. And the reason why that is, is because this max index is one. So in this list, we're, we're always popping the last element. So four is the last element put in. So we pop four, we decrement the count of four to zero. And we still have something in this list. So this is fine. And our max index is never going to be out of bounds because it tells us that, uh, that we're never going to be popping from an empty list. So let's say we do pop everything. Our max index becomes negative one. Then as soon as we push, we're going to be pushed to some count of one and then our max index will become one. So we don't have to worry about that. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward for you. So we have one dictionary of counts and then we have one dictionary of actual number of these, uh, these numbers and we're going to have a list. So it's going to be pretty much a stack of stacks. This is kind of a, definitely a weird problem, but once you see kind of this code, this should be pretty straightforward to code up. It's not a lot of code and it's pretty basic. So let's code that up. Okay. So first, like I said, we need to have three things. So we need to have self dot counts. Let's call it. We're going to make this an integer dictionary. Then we need to have self dot. Uh, what would we call this? 
So so count is the 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 uh, count of every single one of these. So let's just we can even call it list if we wanted to. So default dict or let's just call it stacks, right? Because this is this is we're, these are stacks. So let's just call it that. So default dict. This is going to be lists. Okay. So and then we need to have one other variable, right? This max count thing. So and we're going to initialize that to zero. Okay, so remember when we push, what do we do? Well, we do, we increment the count of wherever we're pushing, right? So then we also need to put it into the right stack, right? So we need to do that. So self.stacks, and then this is just this, self.countsval, whatever that is equal to. We're going to append the value. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to increment the max count if we need to reset. So it's going to be the max of uh, oops max of self dot max count and our new value, which is this. Okay. So that's a push. Pretty straightforward. Three operations. Now, what do we need to do for a pop? Well, we need to get rid get our item. So let's just call this res equals self dot stacks dot self dot max count right so wherever our max count is we're gonna need to pop from there and it's gu it's guaranteed to be not empty because if it was empty we would decrement this max count so we pop okay pretty straightforward now what else do we need to do well we need to decrement this value of whatever we pop right so self dot counts of res minus equals one this is gu guaranteed to be non-zero because we incremented it earlier and now remember the last thing we need to do is we need to see is this location empty? And if it is, then we need to decrement, right? So if self stacks self dot max count is empty, then we decrement. And we just return the output. Okay, so let's see if we screw anything up. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, it worked. Okay, so now let's think of the complexities for this problem. It's definitely, the, the code is super easy for this problem. It's just trying to figure out the exact data structures and what everything looks like. Once you kind of get the feel for it, I think it's straightforward, but it is definitely not super easy to come up with on your own. But it is something that you can look for in the future now that you've seen something like this. It's definitely pretty rare. Okay, so time. So what are we doing? And let's just do the time for each of these functions. So let's just say init. Okay, well, we're just initializing stuff to zero, so that's a one. Okay, a push. So what are we doing here? We are incrementing a value that's um, big O of one time. This is big O of one time. This is big O of one time. So that's big O of one. All these operations should be big O of one. Okay, and pop. Okay, let's see. So we're popping. That's big O of one. This is big O of one. And this is big O of one, so that's big O of one time. Okay. Space. Uh, so in space, we're not going to go over every single function. We're just going to think about the worst case complexity. So in it is nothing. Now, what is our? I guess this is pretty straightforward. So the most the most we're going to have is two to the two times ten to the fourth calls. And so our worst case scenario is we just keep pushing onto the stack. In which case that would be. Uh, this number right here, right? So we'll just say C is called. So it'd be big O of C. That's how many numbers we're going to be pushing on to the stack. And then we are also we also do have this uh, counter, but because we're we're pushing into two locations, it'll be like big O of two C. So that's fine. So this is just pretty straightforward as well. Is worst case scenario, everything is a push. Otherwise, we're fine. Okay. So that's everything for this problem, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this video, it'll help grow the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.